Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to know. Oh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. It should be something like this. Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm your friend in Saxo. Today we are going to know the walking with you knights. I probably let's say we have probably known this before. Read conversion. What is that? We've seen multiple times in our life that distance can be viewed as rate times time. And what I want to do in this video is use this fairly simple formula right over here. This fairly simple. Equation. Equation, to understand that units can really be viewed as algebraic objects, that you can kind of treat them like variables as we work through a formula or equation, which could be really, really helpful to make sure that our that we're getting the results in units that actually make sense. So for example, if someone were to give you a rate, if they were to say a rate of, let's say, five meters per second, and they were to give you a time, a time of 10 seconds, then we can pretty in a pretty straightforward way apply this formula. We say, well, distance is equal to our rate, five meters per second times our time, times our time, which is 10 seconds. And what's neat here is we can treat the units, as I just said, like algebraic constructs, kind of like variables. So this would be equal to, well, multiplication doesn't matter what order we multiply in, so we can change the, the order. This is the same thing as five times 10, five times 10 times meters per second, times meters per second, times seconds, times seconds. And if we were to treat our units as these kind of algebraic objects, and we say, hey, look, we have seconds divided by seconds, or you have a seconds in the denominator multiplied by seconds in the numerator, those are going to cancel out. And 5 times 10, of course, is 5 times 10, of course, is 50. So we would be left with 50. And the units that we're left with are the meters, 50 meters. So that's pretty neat. The units worked out. When we treated the units out al like algebraic objects, they worked out so that our end units for distance were in meters, which is a unit of distance. Now you're saying, okay, that's that's cute and everything, but this seems like a little bit of too much overhead to worry about when I'm just doing a simple formula like this. But what I want to show you is that even with this simple, with a simple formula like distance is equal to rate times time, what I just did could actually be quite useful. And this thing that I'm doing is actually called dimensional analysis. And it's useful for something as simple as distance equals rate times time. But as you go into physics and chemistry and engineering, you're, you'll see much, much, much more, uh, I would say, hairy formulas. And when you do the dimensional analysis, it makes sure that you're, that the math is working out right and make sure that you're getting the right units. But even with this, let's try a slightly more complicated example. Let's say that our rate is, let's say, let's keep our rate at five meters per second. But let's say that someone gave us the time. Instead of giving it in seconds, they give it in hours. So they say the time is equal to one hour. So now let's try to apply this formula. So we're going to get distance is equal to five meters per second, five meters per second times time, which is one hour, times one hour. Well, what's that going to give us? Well, the five times the one, the we multiply the five times the one, that's just going to give us five. But then we have to, remember, we have to treat the units algebraically. We're going to do our dimensional analysis. So it's five, so we have meters per second times hours, times hours. So you could say five meter hours per second. Well, this doesn't look like a, this isn't a, a set of units that we know that, that makes sense to us. This doesn't feel like our traditional units of distance. So we want to cancel this out in some way. And it might jump out of you, well, if, if we can get rid of this hours, if we can express it in terms of seconds, then that would cancel here and we'd be left with just the meters, which is a unit of distance that we're familiar with. So how do we do that? Well, we'd want to multiply this thing by something that has hours in the denominator and seconds in the numerator, times essentially seconds per hour. Well, how many seconds are there per hour? Well, there are 3,600, let me do this in, a, I'll do it in this color, there are 3,600 seconds per hour. Or you could even say that there are 3,600 seconds for every one hour. So when you now when you multiply, these hours will cancel with these hours, these seconds will We'll cancel with those seconds, and we are left with we are left with five times thirty six hundred. What is that? That's five times three thousand would be fifteen thousand. Five times six hundred is another three thousand. So that is equal to eighteen thousand. And the only units that we're left with, we just have the meters there. Eighteen oh it's eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand meters. But and so this is we're done. We've now expressed our distance in terms of units that we recognize. If you go five meters per second for one hour, you will go eighteen thousand meters. But let's just use our little dimensional analysis muscles a little bit more. What if what if we didn't want the answer in meters, but we wanted the answer in kilometers? What could we do? Well, we could take that 18,000 meters, 18,000 meters, and if we could multiply it by something that has meters in the denominator, meters in the denominator, and kilometers in the numerator, then these meters would cancel out and we'd be left with the kilometers. So what can we multiply it so we're not really changing the value? Well, we want to multiply it by essentially one. So we want to write equivalent things in the numerator and the denominator. 
chronometer. So one kilometer is equivalent to equivalent to 1,000 meters. So one way to think about it, we're just multiplying this thing by one. One kilometer over 1,000 meters, well, one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So this thing is equivalent to one. But what's neat is when you multiply, we have meters canceling with meters. And so you're left with 18,000 divided by 1,000 is equal to 18. And then the only units we're left with is the kilometers. And we are done. We have re-expressed our distance instead of in meters in terms of kilometers. Okay, he just um, introduced uh, us a way to convert different uh, units uh, representation. Okay, in another way, it just uh, it just introduced us how can we convert a number to uh, different units. Let's just watch one of the videos to say what's going on there. We're told a factory makes toys that are sold for ten dollars a piece. The factory has forty workers, and they each produce twenty-five toys a day. The factory is open five days a week. What is the total value of toys the factory produces in a day? Pause this video and see if you can figure that out. All right, so let's just think about a day. Before I even look at this information, if I could figure out the value per toy and then multiply that times the number of toys, number of toys produced in a day, then we would have the total value. And still so see if they give us that information. Well, the value per toy, they say the toys are sold for $10 a piece. So we could write this this way, $10 per toy. And then they do tell us, or they give us the information that we need to figure out how many are produced in a day. We have 40 workers, and they each produce 25 toys a day. So the amount that's produced in a day is going to be 40 workers times 25 toys per worker. Now I could say 25 toys per worker per day, and that makes the units a little complicated. Or I could just realize that this entire expression I'm creating is talking about one day. So the total number of toys produced in a day is going to be the product of these things. And we can see that the units work out just to make sure that we're getting in the right direction. A toy in the denominator cancels out with the toys in the numerator. Workers, when you multiply it, this would be in the numerator, this is in the denominator. So workers, workers cancel out. And so I'm going to be left with 10 times 40 times 25 dollars. And I do want it written in dollars. And so this is going to be equal to 10 times 40 is 400. And then 400 times 25, let's see, that's going to be 4 times 25 times 100. So that's 100 times 100, which is 10,000. And then the units we're left with is dollars. And now you might be saying, wait, we didn't use all of the information. And that's true. We didn't use the fact that the factory is open five days a week. We didn't need to use that information. That would have been useful if they said, what is the total value of toys the factory produces in a week? Then we would have said their value per day is $10,000. And we could even write it this way, per day. And then multiply that times five days in a week, and that would have given us the total value of the production in a week. But that's not what they're asking for. So we don't need that other information, and so we don't have to go to that step. And so this was really just extra information, probably to distract you a bit. Uh, those are simple real life questions related to the units, or related to, um, yeah, related to the units. So we are done. We have successfully nerd this unit, working with units. Okay, that's today's nothing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.